Hey, check this out. So I'm getting ready to do the laundry and I have here this jacket hanging here for over a year. I used it usually going in a poker rooms in the summer. Sometimes it's cold. So I'm on a track what's in the pockets. I put a hand in a pocket. Some card. What is it? Players reward. What casino is it? I'm looking at this. I have no idea. I have no idea where this place is. Did I ever stop there? It has my name on it. Must be from last summer. And I don't know where it is. And I don't recall anything that happened there. That I even walked in the casino. So I went to so many poker rooms and casinos. That actually this is overload. Overload of casinos. Let me show you my collection of... Uh, of the cards. I have uh, two sets. So here I have a set of uh, cards that I usually use. Those are that I usually use so they're handy there. And then also I have this bunch of probably at least 50 of them that I don't use and I don't know so this one is gonna go in that uh, pile. Let's see where that is. Well, there it is. Winter heaven. I have no idea. I think maybe on the coast, no? Where is that? I'm really confused. Highway 8. Oh, that's in Yuma. Right. Oh, my. You know why I don't remember? It was last year day before Christmas Eve, I don't remember exactly. I was there, they're supposed to have the game, I waited for a couple hours, game never happened. I sit in my RV, drove to Palm Springs, I know the game is over there. So mystery solved, mystery solved. And I'm back in town. First stop, South Point. Let's track the action. Strip in the night. Colors, lights, life. Las Vegas. Orleans Casino parking lot. Why do I come here? Well, because of this parking lot. Because I can stay here two nights, four days, a week, or three days. Then I move to South Point for a night, come back here. Then I can go to Lake Mead and enjoy nice scenery and no casino noise and no bad beat. Talking about bad beats. <laughs> I'm so naive. I moved here to Las Vegas from California thinking in Fresno. Really, slump, down. Thinking it's gonna be better. Yesterday, started good as usual, and then flop the set. Flop is jack, five, three. Pre-flop, there was a little race. Two of us called, and now the guy that raced on a flop goes all in. He has like 60 some dollars, 68. I have that set. I want the other guy also to call. So it's a smooth call, 68. And I was actually a little bit even surprised that he called. Because what can he have on that uh, board? Turn, seven of clubs. Okay, nothing. So I bet uh, $80. He thinks for like 10 seconds and he calls. With what? I don't know, 6-4, river card, six of clubs. He goes all in. He didn't have much, maybe like, I think $57 or so. I see what the deal, I call. The guy who raced pre-flop and who was all in, we have the side pot. He goes like, hey, dude, you have four? And he shows ace jack. I toss my cards to show my set. Third guy shows ace four offsuit. I'm gonna pause now and let you think about it. This motherfucking cocksucking game. Now I have to go get money and fucking put more money in because I don't have enough to play. Son of a bitch, this is a joke. 
called pre-flap race, called 68 on a flap, called my 80 on a turn with ace four offsuit. Two hours later, I have a pocket force. We managed to go all in on a flap. I'm not gonna even tell you. Really. What the fuck's going on? I yeah, mean, that works just, too. Fuck. Uh, Do I fucking have to start every motherfucking cock sucking session flopping a fucking or turning a motherfucking straight with a fucking club when he fucking makes a flush? What the fuck, dude? I have trips, he has a fucking flush. I flop a straight, I turn a straight, he makes a fucking flush. It was so annoying after that end I left. Let's do something better here today. Come sure. in. All right, well, uh, yeah, just wanted to, you know, I'm glad you're back in town. Good to see you. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, cool Serbian plum brandy. Nice. That's our, instead of whiskey, oh, that's what plum. we... Okay, okay. I'll and that's that. our national. That's... Uh, really? Yeah, okay. that's, right. good. that's well, good. That's good. That's good. All right, All so right. nice so, seeing you again. Yeah, you too. Good to see you, buddy. Jiveli. That's in Serbian. Jiveli. All right, I'll go with cheers. That's... Yeah. Alright, one more. Why not? <laughs> so yesterday went straight to Serbian store. Also, I went buy some Serbian stuff, including that. So. Alright. Yep. Yeah, I like that plum. That's really good. It's plum brandy. It's yeah, strong. Yeah. It's, it's really good. Yeah. I like it. So I spent several hours with Jeff having fun. He also documented all that, recorded. And he's going to post adventure is going to be one of his video. He's going to upload to his uh, channel one of these days. Well, that was Saturday. On Saturday, I'm usually committed to watching the UFC fights. I, I can tell you this UFC. I think it was 256. Every fight was amazing. One of my favorites, Cobb Swanson. He's from India. He knocked out the guy who's much bigger than him. Then uh, Junior Dos Santos, former heavyweight champion, got knocked out again. And then next fight, Kevin Holland and Jacare. I mean, Jacare is a scary thing, but Kevin Holland destroyed him. Kevin Holland is a monster. Did you see that dude? The way he hits? And it's not the first time. Main event is a story for itself, but I'll tell you about that later. By the time the UFC fights were over, it was too late, like 10 o'clock, and I was uh, tired. So I decided I'm not going to play. Next day, Sunday, it was probably close to 1 o'clock, and at 1.30, Packers are starting the game. So I got to sit in front of the big screen TV. So I got chips. I got the button. I have Packers game going on over there. Let's see, next three hours. After three hours, I'm up $24. I'm thinking... It's time to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> I continue playing. And then, usual, as usual, uh, gain some losses. So I'm down to maybe uh, about 200. And I get the pocket queens. Okay, let's get my money back now. There was a bunch of limpers and I make it $20. Two of them called, one on my left and the one, the one uh, across the table. Flop comes. Deuce, three, four. All right, who has the six, five? They check, I bet kid on my left goes all in. With what? He has about maybe $120, $30, not more. The guy across the table, he goes all in. <laughs> what does he have? A flash draw? I'm covered from all sides. I already played this hand so many times and I lost it absolutely every time. But I'm in for uh, about 35, so I call. I don't really expect to win. One of them is going to get me, or both of them, as usually happens. So watch this now. Turn, queen of spades. Guy on my right, he jumps, slams, ace ten of spades. Kid on the left, he goes like, no way. And he throws six five. <laughs> both of them got me. And then the dealer puts a pair on the board. Another three. <laughs> now, now we're talking. So this is like, uh, happens to me once in a while. But in the last uh, two weeks, I lost probably 15 times like this. Finally, I won one. Pot was like 400. It's just about uh, satisfaction getting that pair on the board. 
so after this hand really nothing i was donating most of the times and i got down a little bit not much and can you believe that for another at least five hours i couldn't make back two hundred dollars that i'm down for five hours it's folding or getting re-raised and folding close to midnight played about nine hours altogether and i left it's getting ridiculous for last two weeks it's mostly negative scores and i have to do something about it i think i know what i want to do but i'll tell you that in the uh, next video and now i don't have top five for you but i have another story the mexican by drek london uh, the main event behind me ufc 256 uh, the champion the blonde guy is brazilian uh davison figueredo and uh brandon moreno the mexican in the green trunks the fight of the year or at least candidate for it they were just banging and banging and banging and it came to mind pictures from my childhood when i read the story of jack london the mexican jack london uh, published in uh, 1913 while he was in el paso it's a uh, based on a Mexican uh, guy with a boxer, actually, named Joe Rivers. Brandon Moreno, you can see him. He reminded me on a Mexican fighter from that story. I was very young when I read that story. It was short stories by Jack London. And uh, also I read the comic book uh, based on that story. The story goes like this. It starts in uh, Veracruz in Mexico and uh, Young guy Juan Fernandez, who, who, uh, whose father has a printing business, and he was printing newspapers with articles uh, supporting the the workers' movement, and the workers had a, a, a strike. Well, federal government said the troops, federales, <laughs> to kill the workers in the strike, and in that fight, Juan lost his parents. They got killed also. He escaped. And he came to U United States to El Paso. He changed the name there and got uh, a new name, Felipe Rivera. He found there in El Paso the group that supports the revolution in uh, uh, Junta Revolution in, uh, in Mexico. And he joins them. Uh, they kind of didn't trust him. So they were giving him some odd jobs and stuff. And at one moment they sent him... Uh, to Baja California, where he is supposed to establish uh, the connection with Los Angeles, where Mexicans from LA would help the revolution. He manages there to kill the Mexican general, goes back to El Paso, and uh, between his duties for the revolution and stuff, he was uh, working in a, in a local gym as a sparring partner for boxers. He was basically punching bag. So he often comes back to his meetings uh, with the revolutionaries and uh, they wonder what happened to him. He's all bloody and, <laughs> you know. One day he hears the leaders talk about they need $5,000 to buy the guns. There's some uh, gun shipment that's coming and they need 5000 to buy it and send to Mexico. He told them, get the guns, I'll get the money. How are you going to get the money? Don't worry. So he goes back to the gym and there was some uh, promoter. He has a fight, fight that was scheduled to be Sunday, got canceled because his opponent broke arm and they cannot have a fight. So now everybody's losing money. Rivera goes and uh, said, I'll fight. So he makes a request that the winner takes all, the whole purse. There's no money for the winner, money for the loser. The whole purse, this Danny Ward accepted that. Well, the fight starts and they're fighting. And I remember like uh, in that comic books, yeah, like uh, he's uh, between rounds sitting in the corner, you know, he even doesn't have help or something. And then uh, he's just seeing guns, then uh, uh, soldiers shooting his parents and he, all that. Uh, he goes, knocks Danny Ward a couple times down. The fight lasted for 17 rounds and finally he gives him one uh, punch, knocks out Danny Ward and gets the whole prize. In between the rounds, 
the the promoter came and he said that he bet the big money on Danny Ward and he he tells him to throw the fight they're gonna pay him and stuff and uh, give him good fights after but he was just dreaming about those guns and guns and revolution and he won I read that as a kid and that stayed for forever with me I remember even that Danny Ward name later there was a movie called uh, the fighter the main character was not even a mexican it was american italian actor or something uh, conti or whatever but not even dark skin and uh, well in those days you know the the indians were played by by white guys who put wigs so the movie the comic book and like i said this uh, Brandon Moreno reminded me with his uh, baby face. He's actually 27 years old. He has wife and kids, but uh, he looks very young. And I remember when he had, uh, I don't remember now, is it the first official fight in UFC or it was on Ultimate Fighter because he was on that uh, show. That's when they're in the house and they're fighting and drop off and continue. But in his first fight, when I saw him, he was like 20 couple years old young with some baby face and that's actually his na nickname something uh uh baby face assassin or something like that after that his first fight they're standing you know fight is over the referee is holding their hands and uh, <laughs> brandon looking at him and it's big john mccarthy <laughs> and he kept just looking at him and repeating big john big john <laughs> You can see on his face how he's impressed with meeting somebody real because he fought in some uh, small Mexican promotion. Now he's in a big league. He goes, Big John, Big John with big smile on the face. And I big John, I, okay, kid, calm down. So the Mexican story by Jack London. Uh, three years later, actually, Jack London died in uh, 1916 and he's buried in a uh, California, a little bit north of a Bay Area, there's a big uh, Jack London something state park. So that's the story for today. And uh, you can probably even find it online. Just Google it, The Mexican by Jack London. So the, tomorrow I'll be hitting the felt. Wish me good luck and adios.